Uh, in this Digital Europe uh, program, there is actually certain uh, focus areas like uh, uh, like artificial intelligence and, and, and also how to build uh, skills, mm -hmm. uh, uh, advanced skills in, in digital uh, transformation. So how would you see actually these kind of programs, like we have it this smart app, uh, doing this uh, transformation? Um, actually, there's still a bit kind of prognosis what, what should be done, but uh, since the program proposal by the Commission, it includes these key focus areas, artificial intelligence being one, uh, high performance uh, computing be another one, and so on. So this uh, helps all the actors uh, in Europe to get access to the latest uh, computer kind of superpower. What is, is needed for? Enough? Ah, they need the knowledge and that's why there is this, uh, this uh, part, one part is this uh, digital skills. How do you build capacity? How do you build this digital Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. But that, that is in included there as one of the targets. So, but that needs very much first happen there locally so that uh, you to have a kind of a not training programs in a traditional sense, but learning, kind of bench learning with the others, what is already done in one part of Europe that can be used in your own, at your own premises. And this is a lifelong learning process. And um, uh, the target uh, in this digital Europe program is, is especially on, let's say, talents. So those who create uh, the new uh, s s technology, new innovations, new solutions. And then there, is, there are other uh, instruments like uh, digital education action plan, which is then integrated to get all the, let's say, school children to learn uh, about uh, these uh, opportunities, why digitalization is important and what are the uh, good, good elements of that for them to motivate them to study as well. So uh, you are meaning that we, everybody can have a role in this digital transformation? Actually, especially like the people who are working and operating here with this innovation camp. Of course, they should be the ones that this program is, is helping them to, to continue deepening their understanding and collaboration. And that's, that's why this kind of program is good, because it as well opens the linkages with the other uh, EU financing instruments, but keeping always in mind so that EU level financing is only a small part of the financing needed and financing allocated to new actives. Mainly all the new development happens, let's say, mainly by private uh, businesses uh, who create, who do their research and integrate and then move to the products or services what they sell to the others so kind of encouraging this kind of collaborative speeded up uh, spirit in Europe. Uh, so you, you said that people and businesses are uh, in the key role. So if we are thinking about pe people and, and, and the initiatives like towards a better world and United Nations development goals, could you elaborate what that uh, might give, what kind of opportunities these kind of uh, programs okay. can give yeah. to the citizen regions and universities? Maybe the first that I need to stress actually heavily is so that there has already been years or tens of years too much talk. It's good that we talk, of course, and we document our ideas and make dreams, but it's time to act, so we need more kind of uh, uh, piloting, experimenting, demonstrations, uh, prototyping, and then scaling up. And that's why uh, this, what uh, you have there, so the, and what you pointed out, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, all those 17 goals, so they are crucial. And that's, it's a good example of where now, uh, after uh, years of discussions, and after practically close to two years uh, preparations, the operational bodies of United Nations have moved to action, inviting key cities to take a strong kind of pioneering or forerunner role, not only 
on creating something new, but helping and mentoring, helping the others. So it's a global movement in a way what will happen. And that's where EU needs and wants to strongly contribute as well. But the practical level, again, so it's the cities with their businesses and with their educational establishments, schools and universities. Uh, tell more about this United Nations Cities Leadership uh, Program. Okay, briefly, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, United Nations has invited altogether 25 cities and in, uh, divided to uh, five city categories. So one of the interesting, maybe most interesting for this group and this work is the one with the university cities. And there we have Palo Alto with Stanford, we have Cambridge from UK, we have Noida from India, uh, we have Heidelberg from Germany, and then we have Espo with the Alta University from Finland. So Baltic Sea is uh, a region is integrated. We have these windows of opportunities open. A lot of research will be carried out. United Nations has established a special unit at the Alta University premises on the technology and digitalization, create new innovative solutions. So these need to be then developed further and scaled uh, and on there that that we need this young people older talents as well of course but uh, get the enthusiasm that's the issue of motivation we need to save the world i don't see there enough progress in our space technology development so there is not uh, uh, seeing the planet b Thank you so much, Marco Markula. Pleasure to have you here, and, and let's look forward for the other uh, occasions. Thank you. Thank you.